my dear sons. As time passes, you may forget the sorrow of our years in Soviet Russia. You were, after all, small boys then. I write these memories so our story will not be forgotten. This is not the story of our family alone. It is the story of millions during the war. And millions more who suffer such hardship and sorrow this very moment. Fortunately, my dad took the time to write three books. The first he called at the lowest level, three and a half years in the Soviet Union. I would consider us upper middle class. There were professional people, and there were business people. And then the war began. No one knew the Soviets' intention. Some greeted them with bread and salt, a Polish tradition of welcoming friends. But soon people learned to be careful about their backgrounds, their education, and their work. Lives depended on it. Then it was noticed that people were disappearing. So people would go someplace else. So if the knock on the door came, they, could, they wouldn't be there. Sometime after midnight, a heavy knock on the door. Four men in uniform entered our home, declared us under arrest. And we took off. It was like middle of the night not knowing really where we were going. I must have been close to six, and I had a doll that, for some reason, I couldn't take with me. They took the men away to camp. Uh, and the men went there to cut trees and whatever they were supposed to do. And women and children stayed behind. Each day before the sun rose, we were marched into the woods. No trace of human life along the way. Cutting tall trees in deep snow until we could barely stand. We knew what to do without being told what to do. We knew that Walsh had ears that Russians encouraged children to denounce their parents. There was among us a pious man with a beautiful voice. The beautiful melody sounded so sad and heartbreaking among our little group so tired and hungry. It seemed at that moment we belonged already to another world, where it makes no difference how you praise God, by a traditional Hebrew prayer or a hallelujah by Mozart. I was never so close to God as then. I always considered ourselves very lucky. So I don't need to cry because we escaped and my whole family and a lot of, I think, George's family um, got killed. So uh, I, I know I would not have survived if we had stayed in Poland. I mean, I'm sure of that. Having survived with literally nothing, I don't take anything for granted, particularly our freedoms. Knowing that I can go to the kitchen and get something to eat, a piece of bread, you know? There are billions of people in the world that can't make that statement. Papi says, may these memoirs be an inspiration to you in the future 
so that our suffering should not have been in vain.